follow-up video. So we're back on this Honda Civic, and remember we had some collision damage. I can get this in there. Come on. Yeah, all right about that. So we had collision damage, but this was not the collision damage right here. The collision damage, right where you see that sensor hanging right there, the ambient sensor should not be there. And the bar is buckled, the support for the bumper, the metal bars, is smashed all the way into the top part of the condenser that you can't see here. But basically the bar that comes over like this for your aluminum support for your real bumper back there, not the bumper cover, is bent in, shoved in like a V into the condenser. But it's not leaking where it's smashed. It's not leaking where it's rubbing with the sensor that's dangling down. It's not leaking over here where the plastic is rubbing in the corner up against the fins. It's leaking in an area where there's no collision, visible damage or anything like that. Another thing, let me shut this off. I've about got it filled up. And um, I was doing vapor uh, just because I was going to show you guys some different things about filling with vapor and filling with liquid other than just being a hell of a lot slower because I was going to do small increments at a time but I don't have time to do you do the differences so I, I yeah just ran out of time I gotta get going uh, too much work to do but that ended up being that leak I still got to look for a leak under the dash you can see I have a temperature sensor right here because I actually wanted to know the true temperature where the opening is where the air gets sucked down I wanted to know the difference in the temperature out here in front of the condenser from this temperature sensor that says it's 73 degrees compared to the temperature sensor where it's being fresh air mode being sucked over the evaporator. So when I started out, it was only uh, 73 degrees because the engine was cold, the coolant was cold. There was no uh, refrigerant, so there's no uh, heat of the condenser. And as this engine is warming up, you see it went up to 81 degrees going over the evaporator, 84 degrees, 86 degrees, 85, 86, and it'll keep going up. Even though it's a cold morning outside, it's actually only like 64 degrees outside, 65. But because of the engine running and the local vicinity of the air recycling around the bumper and everything, we're picking up 73 coming through the front. So our evaporator is loaded, lower, loaded at 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Our duct dash temperature is 50 degrees. Fresh air mode, doors, window open, trying to put it under its heaviest load. Um, so this will go, this is gonna get repaired. Put that on our, I'm gonna see if there's a leaking evaporator now that I have it completely filled with nearly 100% and I want to put this on recycle. I want to see the minimum temperature. So before I give my full diagnosis, move it through all the door flaps up at defrost, down at foot, make sure everything, all the different modes work. Now I'm shutting it up and I want to bring down the temperature to the minimum to make sure that the temperature sensor on the evaporator and the controls are working properly. Before giving my full diagnosis, there's nothing like repairing a leaking condenser and saying that's it. And then the customer drives away because the problem didn't happen in a shop, but ends up having a leaky evaporator or maybe the evaporator temp sensor or something else is wrong and you didn't catch it because you didn't complete your diagnosis with a full charger refrigerant, not a half charger refrigerant, a full charger refrigerant. So let's pick up the RPMs up here. Let's go about 2000 RPMs in this little tiny four cylinder. Okay, and you can see it taking a dive. Look at that, how fast. Oh, you know, you can't see it because you got reflection. But you can see uh, the low, the temperature out of the dash is taking an immediate dive. Unlike some of the other cars that don't move at all. And now it looks like our compressor is cycling. What was our, you know, 42 degrees on this vehicle. We're at a little over 2,000 RPMs, 21 RPMs. Yeah, there it goes, it's cycling again. Let's look at our pressures. What's it doing? You can see it cycling. Let's keep following that high side pressure. Remember, it's a cool day out. 64 degrees, somewhere around there. 
the recycled air from the engine is making it up to 72 in front of the evaporator. We're on recycle mode now, so we don't have a heavy heat load over the evaporator because I just wanted to see this. This is what I wanted to do. Okay, we're down to nine PSI. Oh my God, nine PSI is horrible. We got something wrong. Um, you know, I'm joking with you guys, right? Because I got the RPMs way up. But um, let's keep on going. And by now, the thermostat has opened up all the way. The radiator is really hot and the air is pulling through and air, hot air from the engine compartment is going over on top of the condenser and under and reheating the condenser because we're in a stagnant steady mode of testing we're not driving down to a road let me get that glare sorry guys i keep forgetting about you guys in the glare okay so you see as it cycles it's going 2000 rpms and it goes higher when uh it cycles so let's go back to idle oh this is psi the, that's the high side let's go let's let's look at our temperature what our temperature you can see what our temperature has been doing now let's come down to around a thousand rpms i don't want to go idle but i want to keep it like i want to find a happy medium where it doesn't cycle but it could stay at its flattest mode of cold let's see we're right around a thousand if i could hold that now look at our temperature. Let's see it steady out. Okay, I'm at, it looks like 11 or 1200 RPMs. And let me get that glare out of your guys' eyes again. Now you can see it coming down. It's gonna cycle, there's 43. It just cycled off right at 43. So 1000 RPMs under these loaded conditions is too much. Let's go down to 900 RPMs. And it looks like it still go to uh, 43 let's see 44 let's look at what are and you can see i'm at about 900 rpms and it looks like it's not going to cycle right now now once this interior gets cooled off by this cold air has absorbed the heat out of all the mass of the rubber the plastic the glass and everything under this heat load and sun load it will start cycling again and this is why I see a lot of guys giving these pressures, asking for advice that they got 60 PSI on the low side because they have a really hot interior. It might be on fresh air and they don't understand why their low side is so hot and their dash temperature because they're trying to take their tests immediately within minutes under hot ambient conditions with a high sun load. So they get these ridiculously high low sides and high dash temperatures. You can't have it on recycle if you have 160 degree air being sucked in on your fresh air. Your interior was soaked for a few hours. It's 140 degrees. You start it up and two or three minutes later, you try to give us numbers on trying to diagnose a problem that you don't understand that you've created. All right, and I got a call coming in. Oh, just went out. All right, guys, catch you later.